Hello YouTube family and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Lauren McKinney and I love making videos about capsule wardrobing, slow fashion, and finding your personal style. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a trend that we've been seeing come out really in the last few years and that is also really big for this summer and that's dopamine dressing. We'll get into the specifics of what it means, where it came from, why it matters, and how you can apply it to your life. So if if you're interested in tips for increasing the joyfulness of your wardrobe, definitely stay tuned to the end while I provide a short guide for how you can implement dopamine dressing into your wardrobe. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. In order to truly understand this trend, I think we need a short segment of Science with Lauren. Hello, and welcome to Science with Lauren. I'm glad you've joined me on the science floor today with my colleague in science, Remy. I'm going to take these glasses off now because I'm also wearing my contacts and I can't see. Today we're going to be learning a little bit about dopamine because in order to talk about dopamine dressing, we need to know what this word means. So if you've never heard the word dopamine before, dopamine is a neurotransmitter, which put really simply means that it like sends chemical messages to your brain. And it's associated with a lot of things, but most of us know it as the pleasure or happiness drug. It's actually part of the reward system of our brain. So whenever we do something pleasurable, like eat something delicious or see something beautiful, our brain releases dopamine. Now back to my non-science colleague to get into the fashion part of this video. So what does this science talk have to do with getting dressed? Well, like I said, dopamine dressing as a trend is on the rise. And I think it's really a reaction to what has been a pretty depressing last few years for a lot of people. The term dopamine dressing was actually coined by an American fashion psychologist named Dr. Dawn Karen. And really what it comes down to is dopamine dressing is all about finding ways to dress that make you happy, that fill you with pleasure and bring you joy. But I think that the way that we've seen this kind of manifest the past couple of years is by an emphasis on really bright, bold colors. So colors like yellow, blue, bright pink, purple, orange, and green are all kind of the main colors that we see whenever somebody says that they're dopamine dressing or whenever you even search dopamine dressing on Pinterest or on Instagram. And this makes sense since some people say that dressing brightly or dressing in bright colors are actually shown to increase your mood. This definitely isn't a far-fetched concept as it's well known that certain colors can make you feel certain ways. For example, yellow is the color most associated with happiness and it also makes sense that the way we would dress would alter the way that we feel. For example, the enclosed cognition theory would hold that the things that you wear can affect your psychology. So you wear something structured, you feel productive. You wear something comfortable and and casual, you might feel less productive or maybe even a little bit sloppy. And so the logic goes that if you wear something bright and playful, it's going to increase your mood and make you happier. And even as someone who has a closet full of mostly neutrals and more muted or light colors, I can understand how putting on something bright and exciting would boost your mood and arguably make you happier in the moment. I think that there's a lot that is really positive about this trend. First of all, I think it has a tendency to be somewhat of the opposite of what we see a lot of really popular fashion influencers wearing. So instead, of the kind of minimalist or neutral aesthetic, dopamine dressing takes it the opposite way with bright colors and more maximalist styling. I think this does a couple things that are really helpful. One, I think it gives people who are influenced by social media permission to wear colors that they love and enjoy. I think this is also great because we see a lot of size inclusivity in the dopamine dressing movement, if you can call it that, which I think is always really positive. What about all of us who really actually enjoy wearing light, 
neutral colors. Surely there must be a way for your clothing to bring you happiness even if you don't really love wearing bright colors. And that's why I think there's actually a lot of flexibility in the way that dopamine dressing is applied on an individual level. Like, I don't think you can't just slap on a bright color and just feel better or feel happier, especially if that color is off-putting to you or if you have a negative association with it. And I think that this quote from Dr. Karen really highlights the individuality of this dopamine dressing trend. She says, Yellow is the number one color which represents happiness, joy, and hope, but I would add that this is based on individuality. One person may be drawn to a color as a child. What was their happy color? This could also have been a favorite print or a favorite texture. It's not just about slapping on a bright color and expecting to feel better, but it's about pinpointing the colors that have made you as an individual feel more joyful in your life. So dopamine dressing is really up to your own personal interpretation, but I love the fact that Dr. Karen made mention of the kind of happy colors that you experienced when you were a child. I'm constantly drawing back into my childhood, finding the things that inspired me then and seeing how they continue to inspire me and have recently had that same encounter with a childhood happy color that I've been injecting into my wardrobe more in the past few years. So my happy color when I was a kid was definitely pink. It was always my favorite color. I wore pink everything. I wanted pink everything. And then as I became an adult, I stopped wearing it as much. And when I started capsule wardrobing, I really stopped wearing it because I didn't think it it could be a part of my wardrobe, but as is clear by the shirt that I'm wearing and as several of the outfits that I style, pink is making a comeback in my wardrobe. And when I wear it now, I'm reaching way, way back to little Lauren and all of that pink that she really loved to wear. And it definitely makes me feel happy today. So that could be a practice that is really valuable to you. And just because you don't have a colorful wardrobe doesn't mean that you're not gonna find wardrobe happiness. Simply focusing on pieces that you love or have features that you really enjoy or have pieces that evoke good memories can also evoke happy emotions. That being said, if you are interested in injecting some of the classic dopamine dressing bright colors into your wardrobe, there are a couple ways to do that without throwing away all of your beige and ivory and black and navy and buying an entirely new wardrobe. In fact, trying something new and going out of your comfort zone might in itself be a source of joy and excitement for you. So here are a couple of ways to implement the dopamine dressing trend into your wardrobe, even if you have a wardrobe full of neutrals. The first way that I think you could do this is with accessories, and that definitely shouldn't come as a shocker. I talk about how accessories are really useful in shifting our personal style and adding interest to our wardrobes without having to repurchase a bunch of new items. So things like the silk scarf that I'm wearing today is in a bright red, and I don't really have any other red pieces other than this lettering in my wardrobe, but I find that I wear this scarf a lot, and whenever I do, it makes me so happy. Not just because of the color, but because I really like it. Sunglasses, hats, bags, shoes, all of those are really, really great options. And finding them in bright colors won't be too difficult, especially since it's trending right now. I would seriously take a look on ThreadUp or Poshmark to see if you can even find some of these pieces secondhand instead of buying new. Accessories are a great way to push yourself out of your comfort zone just slightly. It's not a huge commitment, and usually if it makes you too uncomfortable as you leave the house, you can usually take it off. The next way that you can implement dopamine dressing into your wardrobe is by injecting some color in your other capsule wardrobes or in your other wardrobes. So for example, buying more bright or colorful active wear or outdoor wear, or maybe even 
buying some colorful or bright loungewear is a good way to see if you like wearing head to toe color. It's a great way to experiment in the safe place of your home. So it's just slightly out of your comfort zone, but not too, too much. The third way that you can implement the dopamine dressing trend into your wardrobe is to find things that have a pop of color. So for example, this t-shirt is in this pink color, which is itself a color, but it has this pop of red. And so finding a piece that maybe has a floral pattern, that has a pop of color in it, or maybe has stripes in a different color, or maybe even just one standout feature that isn't a color that you wouldn't normally wear, but that you really like, is a good way to try out wearing more bright colors in your wardrobe. The fourth way that you can do this is with nail polish. I think that trying out fun, bright nail polish is really accessible and super fun to do. So if you are the kind of person who goes for red every single time at the nail salon or when you do your nails at home like I do, it's probably time to try something a little bit new. Go for a bright green or a bright yellow or maybe something a little bit more accessible like a bright pink. These are really fun ways to just inject a tiny bit of color into your outfit and a great neon nail or bright nail can actually really stand out against a neutral base. And the last tip, tip number five, goes right along with it and it's with trying colorful and bright makeup up. Now this might be a little bit scary, it definitely is for me, but it is a way to just get a little bit of color. So trying a colored eyeliner or maybe a bold lip are just a few of the ways that you can try dopamine dressing but on your face. All right, so that's that for today's video. I hope that talking about dopamine dressing has given you a little bit more insight, not only into the trend, but also in the ways that you can just slightly alter your wardrobe to ensure that it is bringing you maximum amount of joy that a wardrobe possibly can. I wanna thank you so much for watching with me today. If you found this video helpful or just fun to watch, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below and let me know what you think about the dopamine dressing trend and if you're going to try it out. As always, it's been such a pleasure to spend this time with you and I can't wait to see you next week. Have a great one. Bye!